rumour has it that Kate Middleton does her own makeup when she goes to public events, but she certainly won't be doing her own makeup on her wedding day. Now, if you can afford a bridal makeup artist, all the better, but not everybody can. So I've come to meet Bride's beauty editor, Alistair Park, so she can give me some top tips on DIY makeup, and she's going to trial a look on me. Oh, it's a tough job sometimes. Imagine you're an artist, it's a bit like a blank canvas, you don't want to be painting on a dirty canvas, so you want to get the skin in great condition. And that, I'm talking about six months before, that's when you need to start your routine. Go for a facial, get some great product recommendations and start from there and really work on your skin, work on your cleansing so that you don't get any spots. So just think about it ahead. On the wedding day itself, you don't want anything too heavy. So um, I've actually chosen a serum, um, which I use myself, and it's a creme de la mer one, which is lovely, and a lovely sort of upgrade brand for your, for your um, wedding day as well. It feels really light and fresh, and it's really moisturising. So now your skin is prepped and primed. Serums are great because they will anchor your foundation into your skin so that it doesn't slide off or fade too quickly throughout the day. What I've decided to do is use a tinted moisturiser on you. When you're shopping for any kind of foundation, whether it's tinted moisturiser or a, bit, a fuller coverage foundation, go to a counter of a brand that you really like and just say, look, you know, I'm getting married. This is the sort of coverage that I want. Get them to try a few different shades and you'll see that what happens is that the right shade completely disappears into the skin. And I'm painting this on and I can't actually see that I'm painting on anything, which means it's the correct shade because if it comes up and you can see the foundation, that's the wrong colour. That's what brides want. They don't want to look like they're fully made up. They want people to say, oh, your skin looks stunning, not your makeup looks great. Mm. So when you're at the department store, get them to do your whole face and then go outside and look at your skin in natural daylight with a little handheld mirror before you make any purchases because you want to see your skin outside to check that it's absolutely perfect and that you can't see any makeup because you're going to be outside for most of your wedding day, chatting to guests outside, drinking champagne, and you don't want anyone to see a big mask on you. I prefer using brushes to my hands to apply foundation or tinted moisturiser, just because you have a bit more control, and then you don't tend to put on so much either. You can just control where you're putting it, so that it looks really natural, and then also with the brush you can get into these little nooks and crannies mm. that tend to go a little bit redder than normal. And then down to the neck so that the tone continues down and doesn't look too different from your face and your neck. And also don't, don't cover too much of the forehead. The forehead naturally goes a bit more tanned than the rest of your, um, than the rest of your face, so keep it quite, quite bare up there. You know what, we're talking real people here. You're not going to sleep the night before. We don't all have that lovely rested look when we wake up because you wake up panicking because it's the wedding day and there's so much to do. Chances are you'll look a bit gaunt, a little bit drained, so we're going to fake it. I tend to do any kind of blusher, bronzer, liquid bronzers, liquid blushes with a big fluffy brush, uh, blusher brush like this because it just gives a much smoother blended finish. Let's take something like this for instance, one of my favourite products. It's, um, it's like a sort of luminescent um, shimmering bronzer and it's not sparkly, it's not sort of showgirl sparkle, it's just got a lovely lustre that will make your skin have this gorgeous glow to it. You've just got to position it really cleverly so nowhere near here because that's naturally where one would have a bit of shine, nowhere on your t-zone either. So you tend to focus around here where the light catches you and you just want to have that kind of glossy, sort of young, youthful skin effect. So we're just working on the sides, just a little bit like this, on the sides of the temples here. So keep to the edges of the face just to sculpt the cheekbones and then up to the temples so that it doesn't look too sort of Nike tick, you know, you don't want that effect, which is what a lot of people do and it's a big bridal beauty mistake. Down to the ears because those always come up on photos and everyone's always got white ears and it's a classic mistake. Same brush. And I'm just going to do a little bit of blusher and then just focus on the apple of the cheek where you would naturally blush. And that's all you need, just a little bit like that. And it looks completely invisible. It looks like you have nothing on. So have a look. Oh, wow. It looks totally great. natural. Yeah, that's your face done. So then we'll move on to eyes. We're just going to do a really gentle sort of 
fudgy brown, smoky eye, nothing too dramatic. Start with a lighter shade. We're gonna cover pretty much the entire eyelid. Just a really gentle, and just keep blending it into the skin. So then we've got a darker color here. And again, I'm just gonna blend it onto the eyelid so that it all looks really seamless. Okay, gorgeous. A gel eyeliner. Um, Bobbi Brown makes these, Lancome makes these. It comes in a little ink pot like this. And it comes very, very dark, but you can control it. You can make it a very, very thin line just next to the lashes. It's a lot easier to use than a pencil or a liquid eyeliner. And you dig it right into the lashes, and then you can just smudge it out, whether you want a kind of wider, smokier line or a very, very thin, precise line. These pots with little brushes like this, amazing. Very close to the lashes. What's great with this is that you can go thick, you can go as thin as you want. But again, it's all about practicing, so open up. So that's just lined the lashes. It's wow. a lot thicker. Yeah. But not too great. obvious. Yeah. And then the last stage of the eyes is the mascara. Has to be smudge proof, waterproof, tear proof, everything proof. I'm not a lip gloss fan for weddings, quite frankly. I don't know any man who looks at a girl with a <laughs> mouth full of shiny gloop and wants to kiss her. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> but if you're wearing a veil, it'll stick to your lips, so it's really not a practical thing to use. I do suggest, however, um, sheer lipsticks, and you can get these pretty much anywhere. Um, it's a cross between a lip balm and a lipstick. It's just a lighter version of a lipstick, not quite so much pigment, but still really moisturising, and still with that little bit of colour. I mean, a lip brush is great because it gives you a little bit more control, and you can build up the colour. A little bit of that on, and it gives that lovely, healthy shine, but without looking like super glue. A lot of girls get a bit frightened about lipstick, and I certainly do, I never wear lipstick, but it is a really good way of just adding a little pop of colour to your face because the rest of you will be in white, and you'll be white, 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 drain, 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 and then suddenly eyes. So you want something to cut in between just to balance yourself out a little bit. And then there you go, so it looks really natural, really pretty, great for an outdoor wedding because oh, wow. you don't look too made up. Yeah. It's lovely, I love it. Great. Well, I never have my makeup done and this looks amazing and I'm going to try it myself and you should too.